thanks, Sarah. And uh, good morning, Federal Fleet community. Uh, thanks for coming out to our drive through, uh, or I'm sorry, desktop workshop this morning to talk about telematics. Before we get into that, I also would like to, of course, rep the Fed Fleet conference that will be going on next week. Uh, you have up until the day of the conference, so May 17th, register. So if you're a new uh, fleet manager, there's tons of uh, good information that will be passed at that meeting. We'll also have another telematics presentation if you would like to have another refresher or if you have any other coworkers, colleagues that you'd like to have sit on that as well. We'll cover pretty much a lot of the same information. So uh, you are getting kind of a sneak peek, but there are, again, uh, tons of other courses and uh, events going on with that. So um, again, you have up until May 17th to register. I believe, uh, Sarah, you can drop the link into that for them if they would like to register. But uh, other than that, we'll get into uh, telematics this morning. So we'll, we'll be going over a few items, generally uh, going over the program overview and service specifics. As I know, there's probably a wide range of knowledge on the call right now in terms of your dealing with telematics. Many of you have had your own telematics services going on prior to even GSA fleets service. Uh, so you're intimately aware of what telematics is, but as we know, a lot of people are still brand new to telematics and aren't quite sure what it can bring to the table in terms of their fleet management practices. So we'll be going over some specifics with that as well. Uh, retrofitting uh, vehicles that do not have a GSA fleet telematics device, how to get it on that. And of course, going over the new embedded OEM telematics solution and what that means to your day-to-day -day operations. So without further ado, all right. So uh, before we get into that, of course, we like to always uh, promote the program as being the only fully integrated FedRAMP authorized shared service cradle grade managed telematics program in the entire federal government. And so that means that we handle all the administrative upfront actions for you, providing that shared service for you to be able to leverage at that GSA buying power. And then of course, making sure the service is secure and safe. As we know, uh, the federal government does a wide range of programs and services. We wanna make sure all those things are uh, protected. Okay, so getting into what telematics is and why telematics has been uh, brought to one of our uh, service offerings for you, the Federal Fleet Community. So telematics is a portmanteau of the word telecommunications and in, in, informatics there. So what does that mean? That means that it's data that is generated by that vehicle's onboard computer, the ECU, and it is pulled into a centralized uh, repository and that data can be then analyzed and determinations based off of that data. It's data we otherwise do not get at the moment. And I'll do a lot of guesswork of thinking about how a vehicle is used. With telematics, guesswork is removed and you see the actual use of that vehicle and you can make better decisions on how to uh, craft your own fleet practices and uh, right size your inventory and, and various other use cases as well. So that's just a high level overview. Next slide. And of course, the big one for why we, GSA, have brought telematics to our fleet offerings. Uh, as, as a lot of you may know, the recent executive order, the 14057 there, the Catalyzing Clean Energy Industries and Jobs for Federal Sustainability, has uh, specifically mandated the use of telematics to deploy it on as many vehicles as is possible. So this basically helps us inform uh, the Federal Fleet Committee on how to best electrify the fleet based on that use data generated from telematics. So that's specifically one of the large drivers for why we have implemented this as it is mandated now for the Federal Fleet community. Next slide. Uh, and so you're saying, you know, well, how, how do I know this is safe? Well, it has the highest level of uh, federal cybersecurity standards behind it, as long as our along with a whole host of other cryptologic modules as well to ensure that that data passed through that device to the database back to you is sensitive and secure and cannot be compromised in any way. So it has full FedRAMP moderate level cyber certification. 
FedRAMP is a federal community's risk assurance management program for cloud-based programs such as telematics and is based on the uh, NIST 800-53 standard, which is uh, quite a comprehensive document in terms of the specific individual controls that go into handling that. And our vendor, Geotab, has to meet that and is also backed by a third-party authorizer to ensure that they are meeting that certification and compliance with that. Uh, it also holds uh, a bunch of other different specific cryptologic standards there. And uh, if you would like more information on this, we can, of course, provide that to you if you want to actually get down into the specific details of what that means. And that diagram also shows how the data is passed through, how the GPS is stripped completely from the system to begin with, as we know, that is a large concern is GPS tracking and all that stuff It's completely stripped and only available if you explicitly ask for it. Um, and then it is passed through to various databases, one being us GSA fleets database, and then the other one being the optional customer database. It's a multi stream approach, same data, two different streams. So our specific use case. The big thing that basically made our uh, director pull the trigger on this was automating mileage reporting. So currently, most vehicles in the fleet are still without telematics. So what does that mean? So that means it's a monthly uh, snapshot instead of anything on a day-to-day -day basis. There's a lot of manual input. Manual input means human error wide variances are possible, right? So you could fat finger those numbers at the pump if you're going in and trying to uh, rush through it or something and you end up putting a wrong number. And then of course there's system estimates when mileage goes unreported itself, which is an estimate, it's not exactly accurate. However, with telematics, it's that day-to-day -day utilization of the vehicle. You can see it in real time. You can see that vehicle's mileage slowly trickling up as it's being used or going stagnant and not being used, which then you can use it to inform, maybe I don't need that vehicle if it's been sitting for six months and hasn't been used, right? So that's just a specific reason, but uh, long story short, this saves time and money. Therefore costs are able to be leveraged to the entire federal fleet community as uh, less time is used trying to track down mileage as well as the rates reflect a better use of that vehicle. So there's no guesswork involved with that. So that is our primary reason for telematics. Next slide. So uh, what the, I describe what the program is, of course, I have to describe what the program is not. We're not the proverbial big brother. We're not trying to get into the nitty gritty, of course, of how these vehicles are being used beyond the mileage and maintenance data, right? So we're not looking to see driver behavior. We're not trying to ping vehicles, GPS locations or anything of that nature. Again, like I said, it's completely stripped from the gateway and in most cases is not even uh, generated if there is no subscription to begin with. If you, the customer agency, wanted to share that information to us for various issues, uh, you would have to explicitly do that in writing and it's a formal request, right? So it's not something that we're gonna proactively do on our own end. Um, the service that we're offering is also not currently for agency-owned vehicles. Our BPA is specifically with Geotab for the GSA leased fleet. Um, however, the same FedRAMP uh, service that you're able to integrate into your fleets, uh, I'm sorry, your lease fleet operations is available on GSA multiple work schedule. So if that is something that you would like to have done for both your lease and your own, we can point you in the right direction in terms of who uh, will be best be able to navigate that for you and giving that service for your own vehicles. Of course, costs and other uh, logistical issues are different from ours, but the service is still the same. And lastly, the uh, telematics service is not just for regular use, light and medium duty trucks, cars, sedans, uh, SUVs, crossovers. It's everything that we lease uh, to you uh, with the exception of trailers. So heavy duty tractor tractors can be covered, heavy duty buses, 
um, and other vocational work vehicles can be covered as well. Law enforcement use vehicles with upfitted law enforcement packages are also are also eligible for the service. And so long story short, uh, as I know, procurement activities are everyone's favorite uh, thing in the federal space, right? We all love federal procurement law and all that, right? Well, we've already done that hard work for you up front. So it's a seamless integrated service that you already are benefiting from by virtue of your existing leasing and fleet leasing agreements with us, GSA. So all the hardware and installations are facilitated by GSA, either through the marshalling uh, exchange pickup site where the vehicles have devices installed on them, or we'll help arrange for a on-site retrofit or various other retrofit strategies for you to give uh, devices to you. And uh, there is no cost for hardware on your end. Uh, and the only service fee would be if that optional subscription, which I'll get into um, in a second here. So, uh, oh, sorry, back to Yeah. Uh, so also telematics data is the basic information is provided through GSA by way of GSA drive-through. You can run a customized inventory report, which I'll also show in a second, but you are um, experiencing the benefit of that just by the basic service you have with us through your fleet leasing um, services. So if you're happy with no subscription, then that's how you would benefit from that telematics data is the automated mileage, as well as uh, some other basic information data points, and then also determine which vehicles have the service or not. No, sorry. And so I know I, I said basic service and subscription. So what's the distinction there? Some of you might already have a subscription. Um, some of you might be interested in what that means and how that can benefit you. And then others, you're completely fine with just having the device on there and getting that automated mileage. So uh, we have a, a dual approach to this. So our basic service, as I just said, has no GPS in it whatsoever. And also just provides that basic automated mileage reporting and some potential future use cases in terms of EV charging and various maintenance issues as well, being able to identify those. With a advanced subscription branded as a Pro Plus subscription by our vendor Geotab provides the highest tier of service. So those are a few data points that the service provides as you can uh, read for yourself there. Um, there are a whole host of other services and factors that you receive with that subscription. And if that's something that you would like more information on beyond what can fit on the one page slide here, uh, we have other resources as well on our website that you can go and find and uh, the fully comprehensive document. Excellent. So with that uh, subscription, you receive your own management portal, which is where you would go and manage your own telematics service and program. This is where you would see your telematics enabled vehicles, and then also be able to go and pull your own reports and uh, manage as you will. So you also, in, in conjunction with that automated miles reporting, you can get, um, you can set driver alerts, uh, geo fencing alerts, and then other specific real-time reports as, as you would like. And then you can also go and pull other types of specialized reports that you can work with your uh, appointed GSA, I'm sorry, Geotab uh, trainer that you receive when you're onboarded to the service. Yeah. Uh, engine diagnostics and PMs, if you want to know when a vehicle's oil life gets below a certain percentage, for instance, instead of the uh, instead of finding out three months after the fact that that oil light has been on, right, you can actually go and do that yourself. You can also see other types of engine, uh, raw engine data, if that's something that you wanted to go in and, and, and see for yourself in terms of how a vehicle is being used. Um, so we received that raw engine data from that vehicle's ECU. There's no guesswork. And also you can set up specific intervals in terms of uh, being able to better uh, know when a vehicle is due for that PM. We also know a lot of agencies have their own uh, specific system you have to report to 
beyond others out there. So with that subscription, you get your own software development kit, SDK, and Geotab has an open API. So there will always, or obviously there'll have to be some development work in your end to leverage this. However, it's there and it's offered within your existing service at no additional charge or fee. And Geotab has folks to be able to help uh, navigate that as well for you if that's something that needs to happen on your end. A big one that we get asked in terms of, uh, is it possible is the accident reconstruction? So with that uh, excuse me, subscription service that is included with that, you receive a snapshot of the lead up to the incident that occurred, the general um, forces involved with that. You get speed accelerometer, engine RPM, um, G forces, and then also a uh, lead up to that in terms of where the vehicle was located and its last known path up to the accident. That's something we don't receive, we GSA don't receive, uh, unless you explicitly share that with us due to GPS being removed on our end. Geotab also has uh, certified data scientists that are able to assist with any other more advanced data that's needed with that. And they have uh, testified in court for other um, government and private sector customers of theirs in terms of being able to report to the facts of what happened to the accident or to the vehicle from an accident. So this is a somewhat of a new update and announcement is that uh, shortly, hopefully in the near future, you'll be able to leverage what Geotab calls the EV suitability assessment, EVSA. What this does is it identifies your vehicles currently in your fleet and which ones would be best eligible for electrification based on their use patterns. So it, in theory is a seamless uh, ingestion of six months of data and it pushes out a report and will show you which vehicles currently offered on GSA leasing schedule that would best suit your needs. So again, a Pro Plus subscription is required to use the EVSA, but it is something that will be included in the near future for you. So of course you're like, that's that's great, but how much does it cost, right? Long, long story short, how much does it cost? So it is uh, no cost if you want to just keep on with your basic service that you receive from us. That means that you're happy with getting the automated, automated mileage information for you, as well as the basic uh, data that is pushed through GSA drive-through. Um, there's no hardware costs or currently no installation costs. So uh, the subscription itself, that's $13 per month per week, excuse me. $13 per month per vehicle. So that would only be initiated by customer agency requests. We wouldn't just proactively do this uh, without your uh, consent, of course. So I'll get into how you go about doing that in a second. But what that includes is the things I just discussed, as well as training, shipping, warranty replacements, and there's no minimum subscription period as well. If you try it out for like two, three months or whatever period of time, and you end up deciding, you know what, I think the basic service best meets the needs of my fleet. No worries whatsoever. We'll un, un, or, uh, withdraw you from the program and you won't be billed anymore for that service. So uh, the charges themselves are reflected as individual line items on the vehicles themselves as they appear on your monthly fleet leasing invoice you received from us already. So it'll be explicitly laid out that a vehicle has a telematics charge and it is a pro plus charge and it is showing you $13 per month. So if a vehicle doesn't have a subscription, it won't show up on there. And, and also in a corollary, if you see a vehicle that has a charge and you're like, that shouldn't have a charge, feel free to reach back out to us and we'll address that as well. So that's how you're able to dis uh, distinguish which vehicles are charged and which vehicles are not. You can also see that in GSA drive-through as a specific report. 
And lastly, using that GSA buying power, we're able to offer the service for approximately 20% less than what the comparable service would be. And that's not factoring in hardware or installation charges as well. So uh, how do you subscribe if you have vehicles that are already telematics enabled? So uh, currently uh, you would reach out to our shares distro inbox, food solutions at gsa.gov. I know uh, quite a few of you already have this website, or I'm sorry, this email address handy. So uh, this is where you would go and reach out to initiate that process. So what you would need to do is you would need to provide us your agency name, um, any other uh, lower uh, denominators also in terms of if there's a lower sub agency or however you describe yourself, right? That's what we would need to know because that's what your database group would be called. Your site name, if that's applicable to your location. Uh, contact information for all personnel who need initial access. We can dole out access as required, but we just need at least one individual to be able to have a onboarding session with Geotab and have login information initially up front. There's no limit to how many people can use the service as well under one account. And then the actual device serial numbers. We don't need the vehicle data. We, I'm sorry, we don't need the vehicle details. We don't need a tag. We don't need a VIN. We just need the serial numbers. And you can pull that from GSA Drive Through, which will be shown in a second as well. And then any additional, I'm sorry, any additional subscription requests, same thing. Send it back to us with your group name. Uh, I'm sorry, your database name, any group names, and you'll receive that on onboarding. So that'll be more clear once you're in the service what that means. And then, of course, the serial numbers themselves. And so the retrofit request process. So currently this year, what we are doing is we are going to a pre screened eligible inventory list that has everything that is. Uh, able to have a device installed on it. We've screened out things such as vehicles that have open orders against them already, vehicles that will be replaced next year, and vehicles that obviously have devices on them already as well. One of the new aspects is the OEM eligible vehicles, which my colleague will get into in a second. So it's a bottom-up approach where we're waiting on initiation from you, the federal agency fleet manager, so you contact your GSA FSR, he or she will ensure that your vehicles are either added to our list or go from there in terms of if there's special circumstances that require a little more detail uh, to address. So lastly, you uh, after your that is processed for you, you, you should receive a FedEx shipping notification, which has tracking information. So uh, you at least have some formal uh, advanced warning in terms of, oh, I have Telemax devices coming to my site, and then you'll know to be on the lookout for someone from Geotab to contact you to begin coordinating the installation details. And with that, I will turn over the presentation to my colleague, David Voss, who will talk to you about the new OEM Telemax offering and what that needs to do. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is David. I'm a program analyst on the fleet innovation team with uh, Kyle and Dave, and I'm going to be talking about the OEM offering. Uh, so over the past couple of months, the GSA fleet innovation branch has been working uh, with OEMs, uh, namely Ford and GM uh, and Geotab to create a new telematics methodology where data flows from factory embedded hardware uh, directly into our My Geotab database. Uh, we can now use hardware um, installed at the factory to collect this Telemax data uh, on eligible lease vehicles in lieu of installing an aftermarket Geotab device. Our goal is to expand the GSA fleet's Telemax program and deployment uh, without an absolute reliance on the installation and use uh, of aftermarket hardware. Uh, currently, select four GM and GM models uh, are eligible, uh, but I'll be going more into that a little bit later. Uh, when activated and the vehicles are driven, that data flows from the OEM uh, ECU, so in that vehicle, to GSA fleet uh, telemax provider Geotab, uh, where it's updated and displayed in my Geotab for you all to see. Uh, additionally, FMS and GSA fleet drive through will continue to be updated with telemax activation details and odometer values derived directly from the OEM, just as they are with standard Go9 devices. So 
so uh, how does the OEM option work? Uh, the OEM telemax dat data pipeline can be thought of as having four distinct parts. The first is the vehicles themselves uh, via the, their onboard computer or their ECU. They collect the telemax data and upload it uh, into an OEM cloud. Uh, from there, the OEM data is transferred to Geotab's FedRAMP authorized cloud and standardized across the various methodologies. Uh, and then finally, all that data is funneled into my Geotab where it is visible to you all. All data captured uh, by OEM hardware is now integrated directly into the Geotab database seamlessly alongside data from Go9 devices. Uh, the OEM solution also allows for certain data elements to be captured that are not possible with a Go9 device, most notably tire pressure. Uh, and I do want to take a moment to point out that this is not a static product. Uh, Ford will continue to update and improve their Telemax data stream uh, to continue to meet uh, our needs. And so uh, in the background of this slide uh, is a screenshot of my Geotab. Um, and this is from an OEM vehicle. As you can see, all this data here is collected and it is displayed exactly how it would uh, if it was a, a Go9 device. The OEM solution uh, will generate substantial savings uh, for the GSA fleet and our customers, uh, particularly in the area of installations. Uh, currently, a professional installation um, used almost exclusively uh, for retrofits costs $75. This involves a dedicated installation specialist from Geotab traveling to the site of the fleet uh, and installing devices one at a time in the necessary vehicles. Uh, meanwhile, new acquisitions that go through marshaling locations before going to the customer are installed by the marshalers at an average cost of $45. Um, there are zero installation costs with the OEM solution. So uh, each eligible existing vehicle will save the GSA $75 for retrofits and $45 for new acquisitions each. This means between Ford and GM, the OEM solution can save the GSA and our customers uh, in total over $3 million in installation costs. Uh, furthermore, we can remotely activate these vehicles, uh, saving thousands of man hours on installation and device tracking. Uh, and lastly, we'll be able to collect all the necessary data elements from built-in tamper-proof OEM hardware and sensors. Uh, as I'm sure you are all very aware, there's a currently a massive global chip shortage uh, and the automotive industry has been hit particularly hard. Uh, Geotab device orders are taking several months and are susceptible to supply chain disruptions. Furthermore, we're seeing a trend in the automotive industry of factory embedded hardware being used for data collection and fleet management purposes, uh, one we expect to continue for the foreseeable future. But while it may not be necessary that GSA fleet be on the cutting edge in terms of fleet technology, uh, it is important we modernize along with the industry in order to continue providing competitive fleet management uh, services to our customers uh, and prepare ourselves for new technologies, methodologies, and advancements uh, in fleet management in the coming years. Uh, as you can see in this table here, uh, the OEM solution is identical to installing a Geotab Go9 device. Uh, however, there's no install requirement, no supply, supply chain to work around, uh, nor time and money spent troubleshooting and potentially replacing your defective device, devices. Um, additionally, the BPA has been modified to allow price parity with the current Geotab subscriptions. So as Kyle mentioned in his presentation, uh, it is $13 per vehicle per month. Uh, that will not change uh, when using OEM hardware. Uh, as I just showed in the data validation spreadsheet, uh, all data elements were collected successfully. Uh, however, with a small, a couple small exceptions, some Chevy truck models, the Colorado and the Silverado, uh, are not OEM capable as they do not come with OnStar technology. Uh, the only data, also the data we cannot collect uh, through the OEM solution is electric energy consumption and usage for PHEVs and dedicated electric vehicles. Uh, as, as we all know, this is crucial for fast reporting. So until these enhancements are made on Ford's end, uh, which we hopefully ex will, can expect soon, uh, we'll continue to install Go9 devices in ZEVs. Uh, and then lastly, accident reconstruction is another feature that can only be accessed uh, with a Go9 device and a Pro Plus subscription. Vehicle eligibility. Eligibility for Ford vehicles includes most 2019 model years and all 2020 model years and later. 
For GM, it's vehicles, vehicle years 2015 and newer uh, that are equipped with OnStar. Uh, and we expect uh, roughly 80% of vehicles manufactured in 2024 to have OEM embedded te telematic technology. Uh, so we can expect more and more vehicles in the coming years uh, to be utilizing this OEM telematics option. Potential act actions at the vehicle. Some, some vehicles require actions at the vehicle before we can remotely activate their telematics. For GM vehicles, a BBKP or a blue button key press uh, will be required to activate the OnStar hardware. This action will enable the vehicle's GM and OnStar modem to connect to the GeoTap platform. This is needed if on, the OnStar device has been inactive for too long. Uh, and the entire process uh, is expected to take around eight to 12 minutes to complete. A similar process is needed for certain Ford vehicles uh, called Ford C Customer Connectivity Settings or CCS. CCS settings are typically enabled at the dealership or during the upfit process, but for older Fords, the customer may need to go in and adjust the CCS themselves before we can activate the telematics. From what we've seen, uh, BBKP is not usually required on new vehicles as the service has it timed out. Uh, and for Fords, please keep an eye out in the coming weeks for instructions from the GSA fleet on activating those vehicles in your fleet. OEM offering cybersecurity. Uh, in order to replicate the commercial partnership uh, between OEM, the OEMs and Geotab uh, for use in the federal space, uh, 3PAO and FedRAMP assessments were performed and a significant change request or an SCR was submitted to GSA's uh, OCISO. They determined that the OEM solution has no impact on Geotab's FedRAMP authorization. Uh, and if anything, uh, is a little bit safer uh, just because the uh, OEM telematics cannot be removed uh, in the event that a vehicle is stolen uh, and it's much more difficult to be tampered with. So what happens if a Geotab telematics device is installed in an OEM telematics capable vehicle? Uh, in this case, the GSA will reach out to the marshaller and remind them uh, of OEM telematics and which vehicles are excluded from those GO9 installations. Uh, the GSA will then determine which device, the GO9 or the OEM embedded, will stay live on a case-by-case -case basis. In most cases, though, uh, we would keep the device, the GO9 device, installed in the vehicle and remove the OEM telematics designation or systems. Uh, and we would do that because, uh, like, we, like I said earlier, there's uh, a couple uh, data elements that cannot be captured uh, using OEM technology. Uh, in G so the G GSA fleet drive through reports. In GSA fleet drive through customers can now directly pull inventory reports with all their active vehicles with telematics, including mileage and vehicles with recently activated OEM hardware. In the future, you can expect to see these records updated in FMS and drive through after the order is processed, and the vehicle has been driven a minimum of 10 miles. Uh, these updates are performed in the FMS nightly cycle. Also starting now, the true engine-based telematics values will be used for monthly mileage reporting. Um, so FSRs or customers do not need to try to make any adjustments to the FMS mileage. Uh, their, your ability to do so is intentionally limited to so we can obtain more accurate readings. Uh, and we really stress that you all be patient when reaching out to the subject or this issue, because uh, it will es essentially self-correct itself um, uh, this month. So this here is a drive-through inventory report uh, with customer information blurred out, of course. Uh, as you can see, all relevant information is populated in this report, including device serial number, activation date, uh, the monthly telemax rate for that vehicle, uh, which would be right here, and that would be 13 for the Pro Plus, and then that would be zero for the standard, uh, and the most recent odometer reading. We highly encourage customers uh, to pull these reports regularly to keep tabs on their fleet's telematics deployment numbers. So our current telematics deployment. Uh, we currently have over 57,000 vehicles with active telematics. Uh, that's 35,000 with Go9s and 20,000 added last month using the OEM solution. Uh, we also have new acquisitions that bring in another 30,000 vehicles and 20,000 from last year's carryover. Of course, uh, these numbers are balanced by 20,000 exempt vehicles and 30,000 that are ineligible due to projected replacement dates. 
This brings our end of the year telemax goal up to 75,000, which is more than double our March deployment from this year. Uh, so before we end, just a, couple, a few main takeaways for you. Uh, telematics as a whole will ultimately better, help you better understand and utilize your fleet. Uh, while the GSA obviously does use this information to uh, better maintain our assets, uh, it really is a tool for our customers uh, to help understand uh, their own vehicles and how they're being used. G GSA is not Big Brother. Again, like Kyle said, uh, we are not here to catch speeding drivers or control driver behavior at all. Uh, we want to make sure these assets are properly taken care of. Uh, and so, uh, especially if you have the standard subscription or the standard option, um, what we are really looking at is mileage, oil life, and other maintenance related uh, data points. The basic telematics data is free. Uh, if you would like the more robust collection of the Pro Plus option, that'd be $13 per vehicle or per month. Uh, as of April uh, of this year, eligible Ford and GM vehicles uh, are activated using OEM technology. Uh, and all of these vehicles uh, that are active are now visible in drive through for you all to pull uh, with inventory reports. And I believe that is. Uh, we also have a, uh, some resources for you all, uh, not only on the OEM uh, solution, but on the uh, telematics program as a whole. Uh, we have FAQs as well as OEM specific uh, resources, so Ford and GM. So that is the end of uh, our portion. If you have any questions, we highly recommend you put them in the chat. Yeah, so I've, I've been seeing, um, and thanks, David, for going over the OEM. Um, as, as, as David just showed, uh, we're really excited about that in terms of just going from logistical reasons to those uh, supply chain constraints, as well as that seamless ingestion of that data without any uh, intervention by us needed or you needed. So going through the, uh, the Q&A here, we have a few uh, open questions right now. Would you want to take it back and forth, David? I'll, I'll start with this first one here. Um, yeah. okay. So uh, question, I've had Telemax installed on in our vehicles, but haven't been able to contact my FSR for additional information. How do we gain access to Geotab? So uh, you will follow the uh, subscription process, which is you reach out to us at fleetsolutions at gsa.gov. You would provide uh, your agency information, which agency you're with, uh, your site name, if that's applicable, as well as any other personnel that require access to that data up front, the database up front. And then you will provide device serial numbers that are already activated on your fleet. So to do that, you would pull from that GSA drive report, uh, roll that all up and send to us, and we'll get you uh, situated with having a subscription turned on. The next question, uh, when receiving new leased vehicles from GSA, will Telemax be already installed? Uh, yes. So if the vehicle is OEM capable, we will have the OEM Telemax activated. Uh, if not, when you pick up, up the vehicle, uh, very shortly after. Uh, in the case that a the vehicle requires a Go9 device, the marshaller will have that installed uh, and active when you uh, pick up the vehicle. All right, next one. I understand retrofit devices are currently back ordered. Is there an ETA on when retrofit devices will be sent to agency POCs? So yes, we are very well and familiarly aware that things are back ordered, unfortunately, for a lot of existing uh, requests. If you feel like you've been waiting for uh, longer than what you think, reach out to us at fleetsolutions.gsa.gov. We'll look specifically in to see if uh, an order was already placed for you and the status of that, or get you situated in terms of uh, putting you in that ordering queue um, and have devices sent to you. As far as an actual estimated time of arrival, currently we're seeing approximately eight weeks, uh, and that's with best case scenario of uh, 
addresses are correct and nothing happens in terms of the device getting lost or something at that actual end address. So uh, thanks for your patience. We uh, definitely are very aware of uh, the, uh, the delay. So, which is why we're excited about the OEM telematics because there is no delay. So uh, we are planning on making uh, this slide deck available. Uh, and I believe uh, a recording will also be made available to you all. Um, Will the old telematics devices uh, that are currently installed in the vehicles be removed? And if so, will they be sent back to the FSR? So no, uh, any vehicle that currently has a uh, Go9 device will keep that device in. Um, we have removed all uh, OEM eligible vehicles from our retrofit uh, eligible spreadsheet. Uh, so no, no Go9s should be installed in those OEM capable vehicles. Um, Yep. So uh, next question, is there a deadline of when existing fleets need to have the telematics installed? Uh, there's no hard and fast deadline in terms of when you need to have telematics. Of course, there's that uh, memo going along with the EO that mandates the use of it, but uh, there is no hard and set fast deadline in terms of from our and your agency may or your department agency bureau may have specific internal deadlines that are being set but there's nothing from us in terms of dictating when you need to have this on can tell max devices be installed on overseas agencies agency owned vehicles uh i believe the answer right now is no possibly in the future uh, I believe that's correct, Kyle. I know for I know for lease vehicles, we currently cannot offer that uh, in Europe or outside the continental United or the yeah or outside the United States. But I believe that's also the case with the own vehicles. That's right. Yeah, there have been conversations with Geotab, our vendor, to provide that service for agency owned vehicles, Oconus, but currently. Uh, it's not possible at the moment to do various logistical compliance and other factors involved with that, unfortunately. However, it is being, uh, it is, uh, they are aware of the need of that and it potentially might be a solution in the near future, hopefully. Uh, so let's see. AT&T is sending out Geotab devices to current customers. Can these be activated in my Geotab so I believe this is referencing um, AT&T as a reseller of the Geotab product and service. If you had a pre-existing contract EPA with AT&T for telematics services, uh, we GSA fleets have no longer been authorizing those services on leased vehicles since June, 2020. So uh, it would not be authorized for use on existing leased vehicles. Uh, your agency owns, obviously, as dictated by other uh, circumstances outside of this, uh, outside the scope of this program. But uh, Geotab has told AT&T they shouldn't be doing this. But if they are still doing this, um, reach out to us. We'll make sure that we actually we get this rectified for your lease vehicles and get the actual device that is uh, eligible for you to in, in your hands. So uh, long story short, no, they cannot be activated in the Fed rent database. I think uh, so that's all the questions that have so far filtered in. We do have a little bit of time left. So if you have anything that was spurred by the last few comments, questions, concerns here, uh, feel free to go ahead and uh, chat it in. Um, but if you have something after this presentation, fleetsolutions.gsa.gov, and we'll answer your question as, uh, as, as best we can. And Sarah, do you have a link to where that presentation will go uh, for everyone so they can go see the uh, recording and also uh, any of these uh, resources that we have linked here? Yes, one second.
Um, and I know I did respond to a comment as well, but um, we will also send out a copy of the presentation and the certificates um, probably by mid next week. The person who does that is out for the next few days. So we'll make sure that we'll email it out by mid next week. So it will take a few days before it's delivered. All right, thanks, Sarah. And it looks like we have a one or two more that have come in. Uh, I'm unable to see the presentation. Sorry about that. Is there a difference between OEM serial numbers and GSA inventories of the difference between? Yes, there, there are. Um, in David's slide there, it shows on um, what they look like on GSA drive through If you go and pull that report, the physical devices from Geotab always, will always start with G9 and then the sequential number after that for the serial. And then the uh, embedded OEMs will either have was it DW and CO, right, David? Those are the distinguishers between GM and Ford. So they'll, they'll, they'll look specific, and uh, that's how you'll be able to tell if it's an embedded OEM solution. Yeah. Um, I also just chatted, so you should have seen it pop up in the chat for everyone, um, the link to our training website. And there you can see already a presentation um, downloaded from last week. So the presentation's already there. But as well, we'll have a video version up in, again, a week or so. But the presentation's already there. Uh, the vehicles listed in drive through there are now showing telematics installed, and we do not have Geotab installed. Are these OEM telematics? Uh, yes, uh, most likely. Uh, again, you can check by uh, looking at the serial number of the telematics device. If it begins with a G9, then uh, you know it's a Geotab Go9 device. It begins with uh, a D or, um, what is it? It's a D or a, I think it's a C. Um, then that's how you know it is a OEM uh, telematics device. So uh, let's see. Specific to one agency, USASOC. Uh, yes, use of SOC, you guys only had your CONUS vehicles activated. Uh, I do not believe anything has been addressed with any of CONUS vehicles to date. And then I have an older 2016 Dodge minivan. Can this be retrofitted? Uh, depends if it has an open order against it. Uh, of course, going to want to have the device to have the longest life cycle that it can. So we have been omitting vehicles with open orders. And also, if it has a projected replacement date or is within re replacement criteria, it will be omitted as well. Um, but you can reach out to us and we, if you have that vehicle's tag or VIN, we'll specifically look and see if it is eligible or not for you. Uh, have there been any reports of the installation of the telematics interfering with the normal operation of any vehicles? Uh, yes, however, there have been very uh, isolated and few incidents. Um, there's a chance that it could be a faulty device or maybe an issue with the vehicle, but uh, we're going to keep in mind that we currently have, uh, you know, approaching 60,000 uh, active telematics in GSA lease fleet right now. Uh, and we've had only a handful, a very limited number uh, of uh, instances where the telematics interfered with the vehicle. So it is a possibility, uh, like any technology it can go wrong. Uh, however, they are few and far between uh, and should not be uh, viewed as indicative of the program or the, the, or the hardware. And a uh, question about Geotad devices versus the OEM devices. Uh, yes, please uh, email us for activation. Um, if you, uh, it seems like you're already familiar, yeah, yeah, you already have your own database, I see. So uh, yeah, just, just forward those serials and we'll get them added to your database accordingly. Uh, if vehicle is used by more than one agency, how many agencies can receive telematics data? Uh, is there a limit? So that does provide an interesting use case in terms of if you would want to share that information. Um, that's kind of a technical question that we would have to loop into Geotab to see if they are able to share that device to more than 
just our database and a customer database. Um, that would require a little more information in terms of being able to give you a correct answer there. Uh, if you email us with at fleetsolution at gsa.gov with that question, we'll get you the correct answer from the uh, uh, technical experts at GeoTab. Uh, will GSA be covering any charges due to, due to telematic equipment draining batteries? Um, yes, however, uh, those dra battery draining uh, issues are normally uh, caused by an already low battery charge uh, during the time of installation. So when that device is, uh, you know, looking to initialize and connect, uh, it will take out that, you know, that little bit of bat uh, energy in that battery that it has. So um, there are ways to prevent this. Uh, make sure that that vehicle has been running for a little bit when you install the vehicle uh, and maybe check the cranking voltage uh, to make sure that uh, the battery is in good health before you install it, uh, the device. To expand off of uh, David's answer there, uh, Raul, uh, we have looked into this and uh, the batteries, as, as David said, were already unhealthy in the vast majority of the cases. Also, the actual charge from that device, it would take approximately two years of the vehicle sitting for the low percent, I'm sorry, the low amperage of uh, charge that it's pulling from the vehicle itself to actually drain the battery if nothing else was happening. And of course, the battery would die on its own prior to two years, regardless of if there's a telematics device on or not. Um, and also with that, the telematics unit itself can see that the vehicle hadn't been used for multiple weeks at a time, multiple months without an actual ignition event or without the, uh, the vehicle being driven long enough for it to actually recharge the battery. So uh, as we know, dealers and, um, would like to blame the device itself for those batteries dying. It's an easy answer to provide. However, we just have not seen the data to back up that the telematics unit is actually drawing a parasitic charge and killing the batteries in mass. So outliers always exist. However, there's nothing to show that it's an indicative uh, or wide scale issue that is uh, affecting the entire fleet. Again, we have 60,000 vehicles enabled in this. And if it was something larger, it would obviously be uh, risen to the scale of something that needed actual addressing other than a one or two reports a month. So, all right, I think so. We're nearing time here. Uh, if you do have any additional questions after this uh, presentation, again, please solutions at gac.gov is where you would go to have that question answered. Uh, we do receive quite a few emails every day to that. So, yeah, thanks for your patience. And while we turn around those responses to you, we just want to make sure we have the correct answer uh, for you. Um, and then also, I, know, I don't think it's in this presentation, but if you currently do have some type of issue with your telematics unit, uh, GeoTAS specifically has a support service as well, and that's GSA support at geotab.com. They can help address any technical issues with that device that you might be experiencing or being able to rectify a uh, solution for it and see if it, the device is acting up or if maybe the connection isn't as solid or uh, various other technical issues as well. So service side stuff, reach out to us. Technical uh, assistance with the program, or I'm sorry, with the product, geotab is where you would go. All right, I think, uh, I think we're good though, Sarah, uh, if you wanted to wrap us up. Yeah, thanks, David, for dropping that in the chat. All right, I saw, yeah, some, a few more things just go into the chat, but sounds great. Thank you everyone for participating and for attending today's fleet desktop workshop session. Um, otherwise, have a great day, everyone, and again, we'll send out the certificates and a copy of this presentation early next week. Thank you and have a great day.